What up? Welcome to the test lake. All right, so tonight uh, what we what we have for you guys is this. This is the Booyah Pad Crasher. And somebody in the comments, if I'm telling, if I'm saying Booyah wrong, let me know because it's spelled because <laughs> it's spelled B O O Y A H. Booyah. I boo. So, yeah, Booyah. Or I don't know. So, whatever. Just tell me. Um, but anyway, a little bit about this here lure. Uh, it says the Booyah Pad Crasher Hollow Body Frog features an internal weighted system and bass boat belly that uh, prompts it uh, prompts it to walk side to side uh, easier than other frogs. Uh, let's see here. And the drain hole at the back uh, ensures it's always it always runs perfectly. And the rest of it, of course, is in French. So. Um, it's a hollow body frog. It's designed to be a topwater lure. Um, it looks like a frog. So the way this thing works is obviously it's topwater. Now this, this is designed to be a weedless bait. Uh, so you can uh, you can throw it right up into the, the tall grass. And there's a lot of that right now at the Test Lake, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I've had a lot of rain here uh, lately, so the lake is really up. Um, but yeah, you can throw it right back into the grass. It's uh, it, you know it's designed to to get back into the tough stuff and call fish out from there where the big ones hang out at. So uh, yeah, that's that's the plan tonight, man. We're we're gonna tie on these uh, these pad crashers and uh, throw them into some trash and see if we can't pull a couple of fish out of there. Right, what do you think? You ready uh, to do it, man? Oh, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. If it if it's good, I'm ready. Okay. If it's not that I'm not ready. All right. Yeah. If it sucks, I'm gonna tell you. Okay. If it sucks. <laughs> I know I you. I can already will. tell you because I do not like frogs. You don't like throwing frogs. I don't like frogs. Huh? No. No. What do you like throwing? Anything but frogs. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. As you guys know, we do the scorecard on these, so we're going to go ahead and score these as we're going through this. Um, category one: price. Uh, is it priced well in comparison to other products of similar nature and purpose? Uh, what do you say these come in at? Well, if you go to Academy, we're looking at six seventy nine. But if you go to Bass Pro and anywhere else, it's six ninety nine. So. Um. All right, so six seventy nine is the price on these. How does that compare to other frogs? Um, yeah, I'd say that's a, that's pretty good. Um, that's pretty good as far as price goes. So I'll actually give that a four um, on its price. So uh, what about what about you? Yeah, what you I don't think much to add there. I think the price speaks for itself. So it's not you know I wouldn't go as far as a five, but I think four is reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I think you might be able to pick up the H two O for a little bit less. Yeah. So yeah, but I think I think four is fair. Yeah. Um, all right. Next up is its uh, performance. Uh, did it perform the way it was supposed to perform? This is where you test its durability. You know, you talk about durability, its usability, stuff like that. Um, it is pretty easy to use. I didn't necessarily notice much of a side to side motion as much as just kind of an up and down sort of plopping motion. Maybe that was just kind of the way I was running it, but. Um, it does a little side to side. I don't know that it's heavily pronounced like it would be with a Zara Spook, but I don't know that it's designed to be that way either. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as it's, it's, it's very easy to use, you just throw it out. I mean, you can throw it in places you can't throw other baits. You can actually skip it. Um, I, I was skipping it under docks and stuff like that. Todd was throwing it into some of these uh, boat houses and, and stuff like that that are, you know, pretty, those are pretty high right now. So yeah, you can you can skip it. You can get in some tight areas. Um, when you say durability, usability. Uh, usability, durability. Um, as far as durability goes, um, it does have a, a feature built into it, where um, a lot of times if you're if you're setting a hook on the fish really hard or something like that, um, it has it kind of has a break apart design where the the hollow body portion of the frog itself will run up your line, leaving just the hook and this little connector thing that, that you tie your line to. Um, that's that's actually kind of nice as far as contributing to its durability. You have to reassemble the lure sometimes after you catch a fish with it, but um, but I, I think that, that does help as far as maintaining the, the structure of the plastic, and mm -hmm. the frog, and stuff like that. So yeah, um, on its, on its uh, performance, I, I'll call that, um, I, I think, I, I don't know, I, I'm gonna call that average. Um, I, I don't think, it, I mean, I've used some of the other frogs before, like the Ribbit Top Toad and stuff like that. Um, I've used the H2O Express model, I've used the Lunker Hunt model. Um, but yeah, on this particular one, I think it's par for the course. I think it's as good as any other, so I, I'll call that average and give it a three. Yeah, for purposes of tonight, I think I'll follow suit on that one too. I like the durability of it though. I mean, it's one of those things where you can throw it into weeds or knock it into boats or docks like you did and um, really doesn't make too much of a difference there because it's, you know, 
for all intents and purposes, rubber. But um, I mean, I was literally aiming for the weeds, which is fun for a change, because you know, obviously with other lures, it doesn't work too well, but it held up great and caught a bass off of it, and it didn't seem to have too many scratch marks on it. I mean, he swallowed the whole thing and he choked it. Didn't yeah, he? he choked it, and it was just fine. But um, I, I'd, I'd like to kind of put it through the rigor and roll. I think the durability will really come to push comes to shove is when you start catching more and more fish, is it going to have more scratch marks on there and deal with the teeth and stuff like that, as small as bass teeth are, I think it's probably going to eventually puncture it, but, you know, what about it? <laughs> yeah. It'll wear yeah. away. I mean, it'll wear Eventually. Out I just want to know how many uses you can get out of it. Sure. I really like to use it with uh, with northern pike or musky fishing, but I think that's, like I was telling him earlier, that's going to be a one-and-done situation because those teeth are just <laughs> ridiculous. But I, I think they would love to. I, th I think it would work, honestly, because they, they love, uh, I fish up north, and I catch a lot of fish on top water with, um, you know, like, the whopper ploppers and the, um, oh, what was that? Chopo. Chopo, yeah, that thing. And they, they love it, but um, yeah, I, I think this is obviously much better. It's probably more designed for bass, but anyway, uh, for tonight, yeah, let's go with a three on that one. Okay. Um, last but not least is the, uh, let's see, price performance production. Did it produce the expected results? Um, yeah, I guess. Um, I, let's I, blame the conditions tonight. I think. Yeah, I, I think, think we have a valid point. We did have, we, yeah, we did have a pop-up thunderstorm or two flow through tonight, so uh, you know, believe it or not, barometric pressure really does make a difference in fishing. Uh, you know, some people think that's speculation, and sometimes you have to be a little more gentle uh, with what you're throwing. Throw a finesse, throw something slow, whatever it is. The fish are still going to eat, um, but you know, it's um, you know, we did catch fish with it. Yeah, I, I caught a nice one. You caught a nice one with it. Yeah. Um, you caught a nice one. I caught a nicer one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I will say this: when you're when you're throwing uh, when you're throwing frogs, um, if you're catching fish on frogs, or if you've never fished a frog before, um, when you go to set a hook on a fish, it's it's hard enough as it is to to get a good hook set on top water, right? We always we see the fish, we get antsy, we want to go ahead and yank the fish out of the water and set the hook real hard and all that. With a frog, it's especially important. Let them commit to it. Let the fish commit to that bait. Wait until you feel the fish. Do whatever you got to do. Count to 10. Check Facebook. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Give them time to commit to that lure. Otherwise, you're going you're gonna to miss more fish than you catch with a frog. So uh, as far as its uh, production is concerned, yeah, I caught fish. Um, I've caught fish on frogs before. Um, it's not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, it's not my favorite lure in the world, but um, yeah, it, I think it's, you know, I think it's as good as any other frog out there. I, I would call that average again. I don't have a problem doing that. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm going to go three. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't see, I didn't notice anything about it that would set it apart from some of the other ones. So, I'll, you know, I'll call it three. Yeah, I think I will too. I don't sound like to me like a broken record, but um, it, it kind of, the motion of it reminded me of a pop bar. I wish the bass would have been schooling tonight. I think we would have had really good luck with that. But um, I know it's also designed, obviously, more for weeds. But um, it, it's good. I, again, I have nothing wrong with it. I just I think we just I know we just probably just need to fish in the right conditions with this thing because I know a lot of people use frogs and they have great success with it. But mm -hmm. maybe we just need a more weedy lake, or like I said, maybe we just need to kind of find some more schoolies. But um, uh, I, I will use this one again. I'm not gonna lie. I might even use this when I go on vacation here in a couple of weeks. Okay. But, um, yeah. Just for tonight, let's just go with a par on that one. Yeah, you know, that's an above average price, but a you know pretty average lure. That's um, good. You know, in comparison to other frogs. Folks, that's going to do it for us to for us tonight here at the Test Lake. Um, we, uh, I think you're going on vacation pretty soon, so we might it might be a little while. We may do another backyard video or something where I, I don't know. Yeah, grill some steaks and send make some barbecue more. or something. I don't know, yeah. but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll uh, make but a that's TikTok. yeah, that's gonna <laughs> make a TikTok. Uh, that's gonna do it for us on the test lake with the uh, booyah pad crasher. Again, if I'm saying booyah wrong, feel free to comment. You guys always do. Um, I don't care. <laughs> that's what I'm calling it. All right, I'm old now. I don't give a crap what you say. Have a good day. Um, but anyway, uh, guys, thank you so much for stopping by at the test lake tonight. We uh, make sure to click like on the video for us. Let us know that you were here. Hit subscribe down below. Always appreciate the support on that. Mm -hmm. And always, is if you guys have any things that you want us to review, let us know in the comments. Um, all right. So guys, again, that's going to do it for us tonight here at the test lake. Thanks again for stopping by. Uh, for the Casey Bass guys, I'm Brandon. And I'm Todd. Y'all folks have a good one. Oh, okay, that too. That's cool. <laughs> but mainly stay classy. <laughs>